My name is Hannah Johnson, and I'm the publisher of Book Trade Magazine Publishing Perspectives. Um, and I'm here with Jurgen Bose, the director of the Frankfurt Book Fair, to talk about some uh, new developments from the fair that were announced today. So, um, Jurgen, thanks for taking some time. I know it's a super busy day for you. Let's, uh, let's jump right in. Yeah, it's been a very special day so long, yeah, because it, it's been a struggle for months now, yeah, to work uh, on this year's edition of the Frankfurt Book Fair. We call it special edition, obviously, for the pandemic situation. And I was hoping we could have a physical fair in Frankfurt this year. But we've been prepared that uh, the situation wouldn't change as we expected. And uh, so we prepared a virtual offering for the book trade and we prepared some events in the city of Frankfurt uh, for, the, for the reading audience here. And actually, but I'm pretty sad that we cannot have this physical fair in Frankfurt. A lot of Europeans, it was very clear that it will be very difficult uh, for a lot of people to travel this year. So we've been focusing very much on, uh, on the European uh, side of the book trade. But now after two weeks of more and more travel restrictions, we decided to have a virtual fair and to have this decentralized local fair in Frankfurt. Sorry, I'm having some audio issues here, hearing a lot of echoes back and forth, but we'll try to keep going. Um, so Jürgen, can you give us a quick overview of um, what is going to be digital this year and what, if anything, is going to be in person at the fairgrounds? Yeah, Frankfurt is, uh, in that sense, special. That it's uh, the largest book event in the world, on the one hand, for the general audience, for the readership. And on the other hand, it's the most international meeting place for the rights business in the book industry, but also in the creative industries. And so we had to focus on these two, two issues. And we've been talking to a lot uh, of people, to a lot of publishers, rights people, everybody actually in our industry to find out what they've been looking for. And some of them already had some experience with the virtual offerings. So uh, I think we developed a rights platform, Frankfurt Rights for this year. So people can actually do their business we developed the matchmaking function. Uh, we developed also some sort of a party function, which we will announce soon, but it's still a surprise. But most important is we've been focusing on what we can do best, and that is bringing people together, yeah, on the business side, but also on the reader side. And uh, so we developed all of these tools. We developed a conference program for our industry, and you will find it on buchmesse.de yeah, or bookfair.com. Yeah, and I think we created the largest portal in, in, in the world of publishing, yeah. And uh, if you access our website, you're going to see what's going to be the offering and we're going to open it up. And luckily we had a lot of support from the German government financially as well. Um, so we could invest a few million euros into this platform, which is not going to go away, it's going to stay. So we will all, always have the physical event in Frankfurt because this is what people really do need and what they told me. We want to see each other again next year. Yeah, and uh, but we can also support the business in our industry through these virtual offerings. Um, so I know that you and your team have been working really hard this year to try to make the physical fair happen. And you said this was a disappointment. Um, I mean, you've been working with local health officials, uh, on the safety regulations, you introduced new formats so that people could participate uh, in different ways. And I'm sure you've had a million calls with publishers, with stakeholders, with other companies. Um, and to have to put those plans aside is not easy, but can you walk us through uh, some of the factors involved in making this decision to um, shift to digital and away from the physical fair? Yeah, as you, as you mentioned, we've been working with a lot of stakeholders and especially the German authorities. Yeah? But the pandemic situation in Europe changed. Yeah? We were always prepared that we have to uh, act as soon as possible so people wouldn't be disappointed if we would cancel last minute. 
So I was talking to my supervisory board yesterday and, and told them that I'm not seeing uh, the people coming from Paris right now. Paris is in a lockdown again. So is Spain, Italians are struggling. If you come from Norway, you would have to go into, come going back to Norway, then you would have to go into quarantine. So it's, it's a lot of issues, yeah? So we decided, I think it was pretty clear that we couldn't go on like this. So I proposed this to my board and, and that there was an anonymous decision yesterday that we should announce not having the fiscal fair, but focusing on the other sides of our industry. Um, and do you think that uh, the timing of this decision gives people enough time to switch over from uh, the physical fair to the digital fair for those people who are participating? No, actually, we've been uh, talking to, to our uh, partners for months now. So it's not, not like switching over because uh, everybody is prepared, I do believe, to, to have, would, that they could have used this parallel. Yeah, so it's not going from physical to digital, but actually skipping the physical and having the digital only, at least for our international customers. Um, do you know approximately how many exhibitors are going to be affected by this decision? Oh, we had about 800 um, uh, exhibitors this year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we lost a lot of people because they were not able to travel. But actually we had like uh, 40 countries represented with their national stands. So it's a big disappointment for, for all of these countries who really were looking forward to have this physical presence and to do their business in a, in a restricted way, but still do their business and, and exchange ideas. Um, I think on the optimistic side of this development, the digital fair gives more people an opportunity to participate in Frankfurt. Um, people who wouldn't be able to have traveled here uh, or um, for financial reasons, travel restrictions, do you also see it that way? And do you think that this might be something that we can integrate into our physical fairs going forward? Yes, yes, this is what's very important to us that this is not a one time off, yeah? And luckily I told you, uh, we got funded by, by the German government being aware of the status of the Frankfurt Book Fair as the hub for, for international publishing. And uh, so this is going to stay and we are lucky to offer everything for free, yeah? Not only during this, uh, uh, this week in, in autumn, in October, but also throughout uh, the next year, uh, I think, we will be able to offer everything for free till June last year. And when you mentioned we might be able to reach out to more people, I'm sure we're going to reach out to more people, but also time-wise, yeah? So it's more like a book fair, which is going to go on for another eight months, yeah? And then there's a new edition in 21. Yeah. Well, that's an interesting element of the digital side, which is that it doesn't put a time, as strict of time restrictions on, on the fair. Do you think we're going to go towards kind of a book fair season or are we still focused on the one week during the fair when we people are, get together? We are still focusing on, on our, our physical fair a lot, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but actually it's, um, it's a big move for us now to have the virtual offering as well. I don't believe that this is going to replace our physical event because we also need in the industry this marketing push. Yeah, when Frankfurt is going to happen for five days in autumn, I think the world, world world is actually listening to what's happening in the book trade. Yeah, and we need this push for these five days. Yes, we are going to have a 365 days um, supporting program from now on, yeah, from October mm -hmm. on. But actually, I think you need to have this event character as well, yeah, to reach out to the people, to alert people what's happening. And Frankfurt has always been a platform, not only for, for business, but also for political discussions. So we have a political track. We are going to have our Weltempfang. Yeah, we invited uh, David Crossman to speak at the opening. We are going to have a physical opening in the Festhalle. All of the agents will know it because this is where the right center used to be last year. So we have a stage there. We are working with a German television. Yeah, we are going to have an international program. But we are very closely and uh, German media and international media are going to celebrate the book together with us. Um, it's been, I think, kind of a challenging year for a lot of people. And for the Frankfurt Book Fair, you've had to develop uh, 
digital tools in parallel to organizing the physical fair. Is that going to be the plan going forward? This is, you know, it's sort of like organizing two fairs in one. Um, how has <laughs> no, that gone? And do you see this going forward? No, that's what I wanted to stress, actually. It's not two fairs, yeah? It's okay. still Frankfurter Buchmesse, which has been around for 500 years, mm -hmm. but we're adding more value for our customers, yeah, okay. for the people who want to meet. And I, I think this is very important to stress, yeah, it's not about uh, an event which is replaceable, but actually uh, it's, it's an event who has now even more sides to it. Yeah. Well, um, how do you see those two working together? I mean, because when somebody is in front of their computer, uh, trying to participate digitally on an event and they're participating in a room with people sitting there blending the two is a is a tall order yes it is and, and I think we all have this experience now after uh, many months of, of talking to our screens yes <laughs> behind the screens and some of these these talks and, and exchanges um, are more focused a lot more focused yeah but on the other hand uh, it's always it's also difficult to create um, a creative atmosphere. Yeah, if you talk one to one, or like me, I've been talking to uh, uh, members of publishers associations around the world, and you talk two hundred fifty people at the same time, and one talks after another. The funny thing is now I miss when everybody talks at the same time. Yeah, yeah. it's kind of a stimulus actually, and this is what a, what a fair a book fair is about to meet people accidentally. We try to recreate it. We try to support this with our tools, but we cannot replace this. Yeah, this this sense, this this vibrating situation you have in Frankfurt. Well, I think a lot of people would agree with you, and I think um, for myself, I'm definitely looking forward to getting back to the physical fair and uh, seeing people in person. Um, and I hope that we can all do that in 2021. So maybe we can end on the optimistic note that we are excited about what's happening um, in terms of the digital fair this year and looking forward to reconnecting. <laughs> yes, I think what, what we are aiming to is actually to, to send a signal of hope. Yeah, this is also uh, the campaign we are using because it's very important to, to show everybody that uh, books are alive and they don't care about the media the medium, yeah, but they care about the people uh, are being interested in storytelling. And the signal we want to send, and it would be wonderful if our business, our world of publishing does support this and send these signals together with us. Well, I think that signal of hope is um, a good place to end the interview, uh, unless there's anything else that you want to add, but I think we're all hopeful for the future of books and publishing um, and hopeful for the Frankfurt, for the future of the Frankfurt Book Fair. And um, I hope that we get to talk again soon about the plans that you have coming up for the digital fair and other activities. Thank you so much, Hannah. Yeah, thanks, Jürgen. Yeah, have a great day. Yeah, yes. bye.